Life Rhythms with Ryan Sky. Observing the world around me, looking inward, trying to make sense of it all. Hey guys, welcome to Life Rhythms Radio Show. I am your host, DJ producer Ryan Sky. So excited for today because I have guests, the Disco Fries, on the show with me today. Hey guys, we got Danny and Nick. Hey guys. Yo. Yo. Also have my manager and co-host, Scott Waldman. Hey, Scott. Hello. <laughs> so Life Rhythms. So if you're just joining for the first time, what is Life Rhythms? Life Rhythms is a radio show that revolves around my personal growth journey. As a music producer and songwriter, I spend a lot of time observing the world around me, looking inward, trying to make sense of it all. I've been doing it in song form, and now I'm doing it with my radio show. So every episode of Life Rhythms it, it revolves around a different personal growth topic. The topic of today's episode is going to be the power of a, of having a mentor. This is such an important topic to me because I find that any successful person that I've read about has had somebody significant that has influenced their life and helped them get to where they are. And I, I want to inspire you today to either um, go deeper into your relationship with an existing mentor or maybe give you some tips on how you can establish these kinds of relationships in your, vi- in, in your life. It was Isaac Newton who said, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants, quote unquote. And if we are lucky enough, those giants, if they were a mentor of ours that we can stand on, we are able to kind of leapfrog into the future and and see our full potential. I wrote a quote on the topic of mentoring and the quote goes like this. If you look back on your life, you will find an endless number of people who have who have their fingerprints all over you. Their influence has helped you to get to where you are today. Some of these people could be considered mentors, even if they don't know the profound impact they have had on your life. It's possible you never even met each other, but a piece of literature or teaching that they authored dramatically changed your life. And so you can credit them in the same way you might credit a mentor for showing you the way forward. The majority of successful and famous people have had a mentor who is key to their success. If you don't have a mentor now, consider it one of the most significant goals that you can set at this present moment. Go out and get yourself a mentor. Find someone who has mastered your craft, who feels like a kindred spirit. Build a friendship with them. Offer them value. And they will offer you a window into the future. That's my quote on the topic. I'm so excited to dive into this mentorship. The song you listened to in the very beginning of this intro is a song called Believer by my guests, the Disco Fries. They released it with Giants. And I... I, Love. We're going to talk more about Believer. We're going to dive into some of their mentors that have had an impact on their lives. We're going to go over some famous mentors in history to inspire you guys. All of that when we get right back. Life Rhythms after this short break. Hey guys, welcome back to Life Rhythms Radio Show. I am your host, DJ producer Ryan Sky. So excited for my guest today. I've got Nick and Danny from the Disco Fries joining me today. Hey guys. Yo, yo, man. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Also, I've got my co-host and my manager, Scott Waldman. Hey, Scott. Yo, yo, I can't see you guys, but you can see me. Yeah, so we're recording this remotely, still in the pandemic, in the throes of the pandemic, and uh, we got some video going with with the Disco Fry. Scott is remote um, in LA. I'm in LA. Where, you, Nick, you're in... I'm in Jersey. Jersey. And Danny... I'm in Virginia. So we are coast to coast. Yeah. Sweet. So I, the song that you guys were listening to as we came into this segment is a song called Believer by the Disco Fries. They released it with an, another group called Giants, and it was released on their label, Liftoff Recordings. The song's been doing great. It was it was added to Sirius XM BPM. It went top 40 on Dance Radio Italy. I love the song. I love the melodies of it. And um, I, I wanted to have the Disco Fries on today because I specifically wanted to talk about mentoring, the the power of a mentor. I think this is something that can get overlooked. And I find it so critical to the success of artists and and business people and really anybody that I found has had success that there's been a a mentor that's played a part. Um, And and the reason why Disco Fries were my choice for this topic is because, so you guys have your own record label, Liftoff Recordings, and we've been in contact for several years and I've, I see you signing artists and, and kind of grooming them. And, and I, and 
I get the sense that you've been mentoring them and I thought you guys would be great to have on the show for this topic. Yeah. Thanks for asking us to be on, man. Um, it's definitely a huge part of what we do and it always has been, um, especially on the artistic side. Uh, you know, it's, it's nice when Danny and I hear somebody that's like super rough around the edges. Uh, but we know in five, 10 years where that's going to land, or we have a good idea of where it's going to land. Um, and we're able to kind of be part of that process of helping them kind of find their sound, uh, learn new things. We learn a ton from them. And that's a huge part of the process of mentorship that's beneficial to us is like, okay. we're, we're learning a lot as we go. How, how did you get into this mindset? Uh, did you originally see yourself doing this sort of having this sort of role in the, in the industry? I don't know if we did initially. Um, when we started the label, I don't know how long it's been now, Nick. Do you have any idea? Uh, almost Eight 10 years. years, almost 10. 10 years. Yeah. Wow. So when we, when we first did it, it was partially as a, uh, an avenue for us to get our music out, but we were also friends with a lot of guys in the like Jersey scene at the time. There wasn't a, a great scene in that New York, New Jersey area. Um, so the label was partially also a means to get all these other guys music out. Um, Castra, um, Gazzo, Aylin, these are all guys that, I mean, now it's, what, 10 years later, they're all doing their own thing. Some of them have, like, big artist things. Some of them are more behind behind the scenes, but they're all doing really cool stuff. They were doing re really cool stuff then as well, and uh, but they weren't getting the looks on big dance labels, so we figured we might as well be able to help push this stuff out for those guys. Okay, and so you started the label 10 years ago. You You guys, as a group... When how when did you start? How long ago was that? Uh, like two thousand seven ish. Okay. Yeah. So you had been in the business for a few years, and then you you started your own label. Yeah. So it kind of came off the heels of us. Uh, we started working with Tommy Sunshine a bunch. He had his label of Brooklyn Fire, and uh, on the heels of the Tiesto stuff, we did um, when we worked with Tiesto. He was like in a mentorship role to us and a bunch of other guys. Um, so just seeing how he operated and kind of taking that as a blueprint for ourselves worked really well. Um, obviously, Liftoff is a much different thing than what Tiesto has done with Musical Freedom. Um, but the idea of like finding guys on the come up, helping them with their sound and everybody kind of working in a camp together uh, was a really just cool and appealing idea to us. And what, when you worked with Tiesto, what you wrote song for him? You were, you were making like collaborating with him, or, or what? What kind of relationship did you guys have? Yeah, it was all production based, so we weren't really writing any. Ah, we weren't really focusing on writing with him. It was more production stuff. Um, and we did, yeah, we did a bunch of sessions with him. Some of it was, um, some of it, a lot of it was for his album that came out about a year later. Um, so yeah, it was just, it was production stuff. Um, he gave us a bunch of tips. We, uh, we did remixes with him. Um, we, we got a good like 10 sessions in over one very busy summer. That must've been a bit surreal working with him in the beginning. It was, it was insane. Even, yeah. even just initially getting in touch with him was insane because Tiesto is probably the first like mainstream electronic artist that I was ever aware of. Uh, it was the sort of thing like I picked up his CD in middle school when I didn't even know like what dance music was. I just heard of Tiesto. Um, and I think Nick and I both remember when we first got a Twitter follow from him. He had been yeah. playing some of our records. He, he followed us on Twitter. We flipped out. He DM'd us. And we were like, yo, what do we say <laughs> back? We were like freaking out about it. So yeah, every step of the process was pretty surreal. Wait, Ryan, you didn't tell yeah. me that I was going to be doing an interview with people that are followed by Tiesto. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't want you to get the nerves, you oh, know, so God. I just, I don't, I, I don't even know what to say anymore. I don't want I, you to psych yourself out. <laughs> I came up with a dad joke though. I mean, would you say that Virginia is the New Jersey of DC? Virginia is the New Jersey of I've never heard that yeah. one. I just made it yes, up. Yes. Yeah. Virginia is to DC as New Jersey is yeah. to New York. 
Yeah, it's like the SAT sure. analogy. But there's a I'm, lot less tank tops in Virginia. <laughs> a lot less beach. Yeah, there's beach, but it's different. Beach is not as good. Anyway, that's my joke. <laughs> we got. Do we have other dads on right now? Right. Yeah, you dads. got all dads. All <laughs> you you both have you both have a, a kid or kids? Yeah. So I've got two, like a two year old and a four year old. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I got a two year old. Wow. I have a nine month old. Good for you. Yeah, it, it's pretty wild. And I yeah. have a dog. <laughs> yeah, that that could be just as challenging, man. That could be just as challenging. Yeah, yeah, maybe someday. Um, yeah, that's got to be so surreal working with Tiesto. I, I when I look at when I look at my past, I, I've had moments of someone following me or getting to work with someone that felt like that, and it's it's exciting, but it also is encouraging. It, it kind of every time something like that happens, where maybe you find yourself working with someone that you looked up to. And you never imagined you would actually be in contact with them or collaborating with them. It almost kind of changes a paradigm shift in your mind of what is possible in life. Yeah, it just it gives you a sense of validation for sure. And as like uh, as younger artists, it really drew like fueled us for sure. Um, it it got us excited about what we were doing. Meant that we were maybe doing some some things right. Uh, yeah. Now it's it now it's not quite as um important like we're more comfortable with ourselves as artists and we're in a better place just in terms of our career but early on uh yeah it was a huge it was a huge deal and and you guys met in berkeley right correct yep we met in college yeah and the disco fries where'd the name come from so we just we were doing remixes and we needed a name and as you probably already know disco fries are staple diner food in the tri-state area so we we went out for lunch when we were working on we were doing all these like weird 80s mixes like i, I we got to dig them out and throw them to only friends at some point yeah um, we we're doing all these 80s remixes and we needed a name and we went out for lunch and we just that was it first thing that jumped off the menu and did you what you guys have met mentors? What, tell me about some of the mentors you had growing up. Maybe 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 one or two people that had probably the most significant impact on your development and getting you to where you are today. Oh, that's a good one, Danny. Well, you wanna... this might be able to help you guys with that because you're from the East Coast. Did any of you guys ever go to summer camp? <laughs> Did not. <laughs> no. Well, there's my story. All right. <laughs> Well, it's interesting you say camp, Scott. I don't know if you know this, but how um, Nick and Danny and I met was they were holding, you guys were ha having a camp. Would you call it a camp, right? In yeah. New Jersey? Mm -hmm. It was a, a, a writing camp, production writing, slash writing production, camp. Yeah. And so my mentor, one of my mentors, uh, DJ Strobe, uh, whom you guys, you guys know, DJ Strobe, yeah, yeah. He, he was the one who told me about your camp. And he, he said, you know, oh, the Disco Fries are doing this camp. If you can go, I would highly recommend you going. And so I said, all right. So I attended this camp. That's where we became friends. And that kind of started our relationship, friendship. And that was, I don't even know how many years ago that was. Yeah, that yeah. had to be like five, four or five years ago, probably. Yeah. And it's been cool to watch your pro uh, both of our journeys since then. I know Nick and I are in touch and I, 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 I kind of look to you as a mentor, Nick. I'll send you songs oh, thanks, and man. yeah, I really appreciate um, the advice that you give me. I'll, I'll send Nick songs and demos that I'm working on and, and um, yeah. And I, and you listen to it. You always give me feedback and, and it's, it's made a, it's made an, an impact. That's, I think that's one thing that we, have always tried to make a point of doing whether it's it happens right away or it happens like a few weeks after like try to get to everybody's stuff uh and listen to everything that comes into our liftoff email um greg is our a and r for liftoff but like we literally listen to everything anyway um because you never know like i said before like some of the guys that are doing stuff now that sounds a little rough like you can always yeah. hear there's a little diamond in there somewhere and they just need to some time to like polish it out or maybe they just need an email that says like hey why don't you try this and try that and like three records later they end up sending you something super dope um guy yeah this, this guy sebastian park on the label uh did that like he sent a few records and then 
we put out one and uh, this other guy, uh, Tomajin recently like did the same thing. It's like law of averages, uh, you know, eventually it starts to stick. I love that you talked about the potential that you see in people. I was reading an article uh, preparing for this uh, interview. I read an article in the Huffington Post um, by the guy's name is Don Mayer. He's a PhD, Dr. Don Mayer. And he was talking about the four different ways that mentors are impactful. Um, Number four on the list was the potential that mentors see the potential in us that we maybe don't understand yet or don't see in ourselves. That was one of his points. Um, The other three were uh, insights that we don't know. So mentors pass along information or perspectives that we need to Mm -hmm. hear. And they come to us with wisdom that they've gathered over the years. I know that's that's something that's been beneficial to me. Um, Number two was mentors help us with blind spots. Um, They can be objective. They can point out attitudes or behaviors, which if they're left uncorrected, can cause some harm. Um, you know, they kind of like guide us and evaluate our work with honesty. Um, I found that people that I've been mentored by, they'll give me advice that maybe it's like honest feedback that, you know, that it's that sometimes it's tough love and sometimes it's encouragement. Um, and then I, and then the, the final point in his article was, um, when we're developing our strengths, the positive personal notes that we receive from a mentor, when we're working on our like strengthen our weaknesses, it empowers us to keep going. Totally. I think that, I agree like with all those. Yeah, that's probably the most important takeaway. I'd say that last one because the opinions are opinions, right? Like so, yeah. Just because I think something's whack or a sound is whack, Danny might love it or you might love it, but like there's something about um, the the complementary nature of something being good, then empowering you to do more in that lane and working on yourself versus it just being an opinion about a mix or a kick drum or a sound. Well, but even like, uh, I think it was that second point you were talking about, like uh, kind of like cluing you into your blind spots. I think that's one of the things that sticks out to me the most when we worked with Chiesto was he pointed out to us that our style like we released one song and then the next track that we did was a completely different style and then the next track we did was a completely different style he's like you guys are gonna have a hard time building a fan base if you're kind of jumping all over he's like you know it's good to stick to one lane so that people get to know you and then you can kind of like move around from there and i don't know that we followed his advice like exactly (laughs) but it was something that we had never really thought about and then we were like, oh, yeah, that probably is super confusing. If we put out one record that Tiesto is supporting and then the next thing we do is like a vocal drum and bass thing. And then we're doing some weird underground housey thing that's going to screw up our fan base. Like, yeah, they're only going to hang on for so many releases before they just fall off. Well, he made I- a believer, made a believer out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One, we, that was successful. We got a lyric tie-in for their song, Believer. I love that. Abadabadoo. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Scott's so clutch. That's why I have him on as my co-host. Yep. He uses me for my dad jokes that come in every 17 minutes. Uh-huh. 17.2 minutes. Why you got to be so precise? <laughs> I've been in hell in the space in between, dude. <laughs> Life. Another yeah, another lyric time. I can relate to what you guys are talking about in terms of of um, the advice that Tiesto gave you. I going through that myself when I first started my career. I was kind of I was really just trying to get work and trying to get my name out. So I was just taking any kind of projects that came along, and I, some of the the projects that were coming in I, weren't necessarily in alignment with what who I want to be as an artist, the kind of music I would like to have in terms of like legacy music. Um, I've done, you know, I was I, like, I did some music for some drag queens on RuPaul's Drag Race and it's a fashion show and, and the projects were fun in and of itself. But then I found that these, this music is now out there and it's, it's attached to my name, which is okay. But in terms of building my brand, I, I don't want a career in that, in that realm, that genre, you know, I, I'm, I'm more into like the deep house and the soulful vocals and those sorts of things. So I, I found myself having to make a conscious effort to, to really start to, um, uh, I don't know what the word is. It's like, it's like you kind of, um, you kind of start curating mm-hmm. your brand and curating what you're putting out there. Right. And I, yeah. Like 
Like I did that to my Instagram a couple of weeks ago. I deleted over 800 posts on my Instagram. Oh my God. And just going way back and some of the stuff that was up, I just thought to myself, oh my God, I can't believe it. Anybody want to do that for us? Yeah, we, <laughs> we need somebody to take a deep dive through it. I'm yeah. very All happy is like two swipes down AOL and it's already started. are not public. What was that, Scott? My America Online status is from when I was in high school. I'm glad. <laughs> <it wasn't her. laughs> yeah. Or your MySpace. Did you guys have MySpace? Of course. We did, yeah. We were of that era. I remember yeah. Danny Silver. We had a disco fries, of my heart. right? We did have a disco fries MySpace, and I remember Danny's photo in his MySpace. Like it's just, it's just emblazed in my brain. I'm glad you, because I don't remember. So yeah, <laughs> backed up somewhere. So you guys had MySpaces when you were in college? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I did too. Okay, so I'm I'm going to share a mentor story of mine, and then hopefully that will inspire you guys. Maybe maybe while I'm talking about my story, think about who you would want to talk about because I, I really would love to kind of like get into your brains and, and see who is impactful in your life. For me, I was in college. Um, I was a singer songwriter. I actually didn't like dance music, and it was only because I was never exposed to it. I grew up in a very very small town in Western Pennsylvania. Um, so I didn't get it yet. I, you know, I grew up on country and classic rock and basically whatever my parents listened to top 40 radio hip hop was very popular in the nineties. So mainly a lot of hip hop, but then in college I started, uh, I was a bartender at a, at one of the main clubs in Pittsburgh and then being a bartender, it was actually kind of like during that golden era of when pop and dance were starting to merge, you know, like, um, uh, Jennifer Lopez's dance again, um, Akon and, and you start seeing that, you know, the infusion of, yep. of like the progressive house, um, in the pop music. And so I was, I was, I was starting to get used to it. And then I, I really just, I don't know, it just started to click because the DJ would also every once in a while, he would, he would, um, he would play all the pop songs, but then he would bring, bring in like world hold on Bob Sinclair. He'd do, um, like Dead Mouse, the the Dead Mouse and Cascade collaborations that they did, yeah. and so I started hearing these records that I never heard about. And over the course of a few months, I it really clicked for me. And at the time, I was a singer songwriter, and I wasn't releasing music because I always felt like it just felt like something was missing. The energy because I was just doing like piano vocal. And then when I really started to get into the dance music, I thought, oh, that's that's so cool because it's with electronic music, it's an unlimited potential of sounds and sound design and instruments and and that really excited me but it was such a foreign world um and at the same time when i was in pittsburgh there was dj strobe was one of the popular local djs and i remember i reached out to him on facebook i just sent him a message i, I don't remember exactly what i said but it was something about just saying hi and that i admire his work and i you know i would love to just meet him i didn't really have any I didn't have an agenda. I just, I saw that he was producing music and, and he was popular in the scene and he was very much a house DJ and I was just curious. And he was gracious enough to invite me over to his studio. And I remember I came over to his studio. We were like instantly became friends. Um, he felt kind of like a kindred spirit to me. And um, I had written a song and I sent it to him. And then on the spot, when I was there, he pulled up the song and he started turning it into a dance record, just playing around with the chords and putting sounds into it. And for the first time in my life, I was able to hear something. I mean, he's super talented and, and he had been doing it for decades by that point. So he was able to work quickly, but then also the quality of what he was producing was on point with that that moment in time. And I was actually able to hear the potential of what I could do with music, even though I had no idea how to produce. Um, and that he, it kind of like, I, I, it planted the seed for me. I wanted to get into dance music and, and that was the start of our mentorship. And then over the course of a couple of years, I got, you know, I started learning how to DJ or not. Yeah. Learning how to DJ, learning Ableton and, and throughout the, the time he would give me advice on plugins. Um, he would listen to my stuff and he would, he would give me, um, a lot of feedback, a lot, a lot of feedback. And F, it was a little bit, discouraging at first because I, I felt overwhelmed by kind of like the knowledge gap of how sure. far I needed to go. But he was always very encouraging and he saved me a lot of time too. And that's something I, I want to point out about mentors for people who are listening is when you have a mentor, they, they could save you a lot of time. They save you maybe from making mistakes that they made. 
And those we have limited time and limited resources. And when you have a mentor, they help you save those things and make the most of it. Would you guys agree with that? 100%. 100%. Yeah. So that's how Strobe and I met. I'd, I'd love to know, did you, do you guys have a DJ Strobe in your history? <laughs> <laughs> Danny, you um, want to go? Yeah. Well, so I think if, if there were two people that uh, served as mentors for us in, in our career together, um, we already mentioned Tiesto, but the other one for sure would be Tommy Sunshine. Um, and for anyone that doesn't know Tommy Sunshine, he is a, a DJ, a producer, a label owner. He's he's uh, in Brooklyn. He's been there for, I don't know, 15 years or something. And we met him um, kind of like around the time that we started the label. I, happen, I moved uh, to Brooklyn and happened to move in like across the street from him. Um, we had really? met, yeah, completely by chance. Um, that was meant to we, be. Yeah, we had met like six months earlier and worked on a record together. That the day that we met, we got a record finished. That we got signed um, to a label in Australia, Vicious, and he instantly made it clear to us. He was like, "This doesn't happen all the time." Like. He's worked with so many people. He's like, it's not every time you walk in the studio with a stranger that you walk away with something that sounds this good. Um, and, uh, and, get, and get like a pretty good deal on it, like right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. And, um, well, and that was kind can of. Can you give us start. an idea? Um, I, I don't. Can you give us an idea of where this is in your career when you met Tommy Sunshine? You guys were already a group? This is like right before the label. So like 2010 ish, right? Yeah. Yeah. This was, a, okay. I feel like a lot of stuff um, happened for us sort of within a pretty small window from like 2010 to 2011 is where we took a lot of uh, kind of leaps forward in our career. Um, and Tommy just introduced such like a different perspective to dance music for us because he's been into it since he was a teenager. He grew up outside of Chicago. So he was the guy that would drive like, 10 hours to Detroit to see some techno thing like, wow. um, and he, he just lived a crazy life up to the point before we met him. Um, so he really, he introduced us to a lot of the history of dance music. Um, sometimes through like, while we were producing, he'd be like, Oh, you know what this part needs right here. You need to go on YouTube, pull up this track, this mix wow. of it. And it would be like, artist I had never heard of track. I had never heard of. And he'd be like, jump ahead. No second break, go a little farther. He'd be like, you hear that sound right there. We need to do something like that. I was like, How and, do you- and the song would have like 500 views on YouTube. It would be like wow. a this deep, yeah. deep classic. So he has like an encyclopedic um, knowledge of dance music. Um, so he, he introduced us to a lot of the history there and also just gave us a lot of generally good advice about, because he's had such a long career in the industry. Yeah. Um, just general advice on how to navigate it, gave us his thoughts, because he's in a very different space than we are. Like when we're working with Tiesto, he's doing his like cool underground thing, taking us to parties with like Gasafelstein and Brodinski in Amsterdam. Um, so we, we got to like have our feet in a little bit of both worlds sort of um and i think it gave us a really good perspective that we wouldn't have had had we not met him that's so cool him tying you him him pointing you to to records and sounds that you never heard of like you can't buy that kind of insight i yeah for sure when when i uh when i had mentioned earlier about the the drag queens and the one of the one of the records that I did for them, she wanted it to to have a Vogue influence, like the Vogue genre. And when I was talking to DJ Strobe about it, he was telling me about the Masters at Work, the Ha Dance. And I was like, who's Masters at Work? And he about had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. And and then he, 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 he was saying like a lot of the Vogue, classic Vogue records sample this track, the Ha Dance. So And so I listened to it and I, I sampled some of it and I never would have known about that. And it made what I produced for the artist more authentic because I was able to incorporate some of these real Vogue sounds. But like, yeah, you can't buy your, that. To your point, it's like, how are you going to know that on your own? Like, yes, you could go and dig through the legacy of dance music, <laughs> but really, unless you live through it, 
and experienced it live and like really knew all the little facets of it. That's the only way you get insight like that. Yeah. Yeah. So Tommy Sunshine. Okay. So he mentored the both of you and, and I imagine he was someone you looked up to on multiple levels as a, as producer and artist and also want, wanting to start your label. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And he has he given one. you advice on the label front as well? Yeah. Well, actually like we're in partnership with his label on like the publishing side. So, okay. uh, Danny and I like did a bunch of sync stuff like in college. And then we kind of carried through as we started doing disco fries stuff. It was like, oh, well this, now we're doing original music. It makes sense to pitch these guys, like what we're doing on the artist side. Cause it has a story. Um, some of these records have done really well and music supervisors like to see that. Uh, so we started pitching all this sync stuff and now we've, uh, we do, we have a joint venture with Sony ATV where, the label, all our partner labels and writers are all like under this umbrella that we've kind of curated. So Tommy's part of that. Well, at least Brooklyn Fire is. Tommy has his own thing. That's so cool. Going from a mentor to a collaborator. Yeah. That, that's awesome. Okay. So guys, we are, uh, we are, we're at the end of segment one. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to dive in. I would love to hear from Nick. I would love sure. to hear a mentor of yours. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back on Life Rhythms. Welcome back to Life Rhythms Radio Show. I am your host, DJ producer Ryan Sky. I am back here with my guest today, the Disco Fries, made up of Danny and Nick. Hey, guys. Hey. What's we up, got man? Scott. Yo, yo. Hey, hey, hey. And we got Scott, my manager and co host. Hey, Scott. Hello. Hi, Scott. <laughs> Well, we just played a clip of the song Believer by the Disco Fries, also uh, that they co-released with Giants. And um, I, the song is, I, I love this song. It was on BPM. We talked about how it was on dance radio in Italy, Top 40. One of the lyrics um, stood out to me, you give me shelter and I know that I'm safe in your hands. I really love those lyrics. And when I think about, because today the topic we're talking about mentors, the power of a mentor. And by the way, if you're listening right now, if you don't have a mentor, I, I really hope that by the end of this episode, you're inspired to go out and, and, and find yourself a mentor, whether it's you're in business or music or, or whatever industry or personal kind of growth you want to achieve in your life. I hope you're inspired to find a mentor to, to work on that area of your life. So powerful. And I love this lyric. You give me shelter and I know that I am safe in your hands. In terms of mentoring, that's, that's kind of how I feel when I think about people that have guided me along the way is they, they kind of give me this sense of shelter. I feel safe with them because they've, they've been where I want to go. Um, they've kind of walked some of the road and they, they've got wisdom. They've made mistakes and they can kind of save us from making them those mistakes and, and help guide us. Um, so yeah, that's, totally. that's believer. I want to get into. So when, before we took a break, um, Danny was talking about some mentor, a mentor, Tommy Sunshine, that was, has had an impact on their careers. I would, in, in a second, I want to get into Nick's take. Um, but before that, let's talk about, I want to, I want to kind of do a spitfire of some famous mentors. If you're sitting on the fence right now and you're like, I don't know if I need a mentor. Well, listen up because almost every famous and successful person that has been, has had some sort of mentor. So, okay, here are nine famous mentor relationships that maybe you didn't know about. Number one, Steve Jobs mentored Mark Zuckerberg. The two of them were said to have taken walks around Palo Alto discussing how Zuckerberg might develop Facebook as well as entrepreneurship. So Steve Jobs was an integral part in Mark in the beginning. Did good jobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Number two, Maya Angelou and Oprah Winfrey. So even Oprah had a mentor, you guys. And I have, I found a, Oprah was quoted as saying that Maya was always there for her and guided. Well, okay, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. So Oprah's quote is Maya was there. For, <laughs> Maya was you there for me. You, you get, get a mentor. mentor. <laughs> you get a mentor. Basically, Sorry. she said that, that Maya was there for her during the most important years of her life. And Oprah says that mentors are important. And I don't think anybody makes it in the world without some form of mentorship. Ryan, I have a quick question, though. Yes. Did the first person on earth have a mentor? Mm. Oh, we're getting... Well, that's like the so chicken or the egg question, because was there just one person? Yes. His name was Bill. And he had it rough. 
I, I would say in the beginning, the mentor relationship would have been parent child. Ah, right. Well done. Um, thank you. Number three. So, okay. I had to, number three is Christian Dior mentored. And I had to look up the pronunciation because I didn't want to get it wrong, but it's Eve Saint Laurent. Just so you know, Eve is spelled Y V E. Yeah. So Christian Dior mentored Eve Saint Laurent and Saint Laurent <laughs> became <laughs> Christian's personal assistant, which I didn't know that. And um, Saint Laurent learned the secret of Hoka Tour and how to run the company from Christian Dior, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Um, number four famous mentors, Warren Buff and Bill Gates. Gates admits that over the years, he's turned to Buffett for advice on various subjects and has referred to Buffett as one of a kind. Oh, so sweet. Uh, number five, Steven Spielberg mentored JJ Abrams. I also didn't know that. Do you guys know that? No, nope. So, uh-uh. so I guess, um, Abrams was 16 years old when he met Spe- Spielberg. Spielberg hired him to clean and tape his old movies so they'd never get lost. And then they grew close and, and Spe- then he'd get lost. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, didn't Did he do, lost? do the show Lost? I don't know. Did he? Yeah, I'm, I'm Googling it. Yeah, yeah, if, he yeah, did, yeah, yeah. if he did, that's the king joke right there. That's <laughs> the <laughs> I mean, I'm I pretty sure it. he did. Anyway, start. Okay, let us know what you find on Google. I'm going to oh, move I'm gonna on. find the shit out number of it. Nope. Co-creator. Bam. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's, okay. Love it. Yeah, so he, so he was 16 years old when he met Steven. Number, okay, number seven... I was surprised, but we're on number six. So I'm just going to get you guys excited about that. Number six is <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi mentoring Nelson Mandela. Wow. But here's the thing. They, and this is why I put this on the list, because this is something else I want to point out to listeners. They never met. Gandhi mentored Mandela and they never met, but Mandela was greatly influenced by the books and writings of Gandhi. Wow. So I want to just point out, you don't necessarily have to be friends with someone who's, who you consider an influence or mentor in your life. They could have works of literature or teachings or something that significantly inspire you to the point where you're kind of following in a similar path as them. That would be the case with Gandhi and Mandela. Number seven. Wait, wait, wait. I want to just (laughs) compliment you. And it's not a joke. Um, Every single person who listens to the show who has never met you, Ryan, might consider you a mentor. Oh, I never thought of that. True. Yeah, there oh, I love that. Well, that's why I wanted to do the show. I didn't think of it in terms of mentoring, but I was hoping to inspire. And the reason you want to do the influence. show is you wanted your manager to say that you're the mentor to people. Well, I wanted a platform for dad jokes. Well, you got it. You definitely <laughs> got it. <laughs> okay. Can we do number seven? Cause this one really surprised me. Let's do it. Number seven, Michelle Obama mentored Barack Obama. Michelle yeah. Robinson was her name, right? Her, her, before they were married. Michelle Robinson, she was designated as Barack's mentor at the law firm, which they both worked at while he was a summer associate. So she she started out as a mentor to him. That's where they met. And then, and over the years, he credits Michelle as, as significantly having an impact on his achievements. But I didn't realize that she was his mentor at a law firm. I didn't know that's how And I can say that's it cool. like zero irony. She's the best first lady ever. Ever. Yeah. Ever. I wish she would run. Oh, she would win. So would Oprah. There's time. There's time. So would yeah. pretty much everyone on this list. Like I JJ Abrams should run. <laughs> <laughs> he would not lost. I'd love to see his commercials. It'd be very, they'd be very dramatic, and there would always be a twist at the very end. Something I don't know. Really maybe pre pre Star Wars because I feel like that's a little divisive. That's do you think new Star Wars? Do you think Abrams Abrams has lost his step? <laughs> 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 okay, okay, okay. We're almost done. Uh, we're almost done with this list, and then we're going to dive into into Nick. Uh, number eight on this list of famous mentors, mentor, mentee relationship. Number eight is is Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor. Hepburn mentored Taylor throughout her career, and they remained friends up until Hepburn's passing in 93. Mm-hmm. thought that was interesting. And the last one, number nine, is Sir, I don't know who this is, Sir Freddie Laker mentoring Richard Branson. Do you guys know Freddie Laker? Mm-mm. He sounds well, rich. Yeah, yeah Sir, he sounds rich in English. <laughs> I'm looking. Scott, 
Scott, can you can I'm, can one I'm of you Google? Googling it. You don't have to tell me to do that. <laughs> he was right. an Eng- English airline entrepreneur, best known for founding Laker Airways in 1966. Okay, which then went, they went bankrupt in 1983. <laughs> yes, they did go bankrupt. Yep. I want him as my mentor. That's interesting uh, because when I okay, so so he mentored Branson when Branson was trying to get when he was struggling to get Virgin Atlantic up and running. I don't know if this is the best success example of a successful mentor relationship because didn't Virgin also go belly up Virgin Atlantic? Yeah, but he's such a winner. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Wasn't he yeah. the one who wanted to hot air balloon around the world? Yes. What a decent yeah. thing. He's cool. He's so interesting. But, but Branson said about Branson quote, um, he said, if you ask any successful business person, they will always have had a great, a great mentor at some point along the road. Yeah, um, I'm sure that's true. Yeah, but I there, I wanted to bring up some of these famous mentors because, again, I just don't think this subject gets talked about enough, and it is so critical to the success of like everybody who is making a difference and making an impact in their career and their lives. And and I and and I know like I come across people that want to break into a particular industry and they feel overwhelmed, and I I believe that have finding a mentor is the is the easiest way to kind of jumpstart that process. At least that's how I felt when I met DJ Strobe is I had somebody that could kind of like pull me along and give me advice and, and I saved a lot of time. Well, you know, yeah, I, think I feel like if you're the smartest but, person in the room, you're in the wrong room. That's true. That's true. So I'm uh, in the wrong room. Are you even in a room? Cause I, <laughs> I'm in a room by myself. <laughs> he kind of sounds like he's in a bathroom. Yeah. I mean, I, I tried to avoid like you guys hearing number one, but. Oh well. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So I want to. I would love to hear from you, Nick, in terms of mentoring, like some, like someone who's had an influence on your life, whether yeah. it was. So yeah. This this whole conversation has been interesting because you know from the span of people you just mentioned to people you were just talking about who feel like they need a mentor, can't find a mentor. Um, for me, it kind of started at home, like. Um, but Danny can attest to this. Like my grandfather was my best friend, uh, best man in my wedding, uh, grew up with me and kind of was the person that got me into music. Um, middle class, like work three jobs, uh, but a hustler and knew how to just make a buck. And I think part of that translated for me in music because for me, it was always about like, I love music, but I also want to monetize music. So with Danny and I, it's it's like the perfect marriage because he's like super hyper creative. Um, no, is like a fucking scientist with music. And yeah, he is. He's I, a wizard. He he really is. And yeah. I love the yeah, I love creating, but I can't get into the the crazy shit and experiments that he gets into. Like I, if I listen to four bars of a song for more than like a half hour, I go out of my mind, but he could listen for eight hours and be fine. Um, so for us, it's like I'm on the creative side, but also on the business side. And a lot of that ties back to, you know, when I was growing up, my grandfather would have me on the piano for an hour and then we'd have like a garage sale. And then we'd go like trash picking so he could like find something to sell at the garage sale. And then I'd be back on the piano and we'd do do some other shit that was like unrelated to, to music, but super creative in a different way. Like he did painting all the time and then we'd go to galleries and like sell his stuff. So my whole, like as I grew up and I was like a teen, early teenager, I was like, I really love music. But there was that whole other side of like, but how do I monetize music and make it into a living? So like once I started DJing, that kind of changed that. And from yeah. DJing, it got into production and production. It led me into like, how do I start a label? And like, how do I sell beats? Um, so for, for me, like there is no me without any of the stuff he kind of brought me up with. And uh, I, again, like it was a super basic middle class like low low end lifestyle but like those little lessons of like listen if you're selling this uh bench at a yard sale and you want five dollars ask the guy for eight so of course now i'm like all right well we're selling a beat for or a track to this music supervisor for x like 
why wouldn't we ask for X, Y, Z? And if they come back with X, Y, like it's a win. You literally just made, I don't know, let's say you're, you're asking for a thousand dollars. You want a thousand dollars. They want to pay 500 and you ask, you land at 750 in the matter of one ask, you made $250 by asking one question. Can I have more? Like, so that's my MO. <laughs> Can I tell you a dad joke that is kind of a reflection on what you said? Yes, please. Go. Right. So this kid gets home from school and he says, dad, can I please have $10? And the dad's like, $8? What do you need $6 for? <laughs> stealing. Stealing that. Yeah. 100%. I think that's my favorite one so far. <laughs> your grandpa was your best man. That's really cool. Oh, thanks, man. I wish I could have heard his speech. Yeah, he uh, he started by singing uh, "Singing in the Rain" to 200 people at my wedding. It's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So and then you guys I mean, just walked Casablanca, and the wedding ended. Yeah, yeah, right. No, but I think it's important to know, like, for people out there who are like, "I need a mentor," but I'm not, I'm not in the music scene yet. I'm not around anybody that uh, I can relate to that wants to do what I do. I think you just got to look around your immediate circle first and maybe find somebody that has some qualities that you can identify with. It doesn't have to be directly related to what you're doing. Totally. Uh -huh. And the other thing I think, I think is worth pointing out because you were saying Ryan, that like everyone should be seeking out a mentor. Sometimes it's hard to like go out and find the mentor that you're looking for. But the more relationships that you cultivate, um, it took Nick and I a long time. And we've had lots of different sorts of mentors along the way. But it was really just meet people, always be working, trying to connect with new people, whatever. And eventually, you'll just fall into those relationships. Uh, we definitely weren't seeking out Tommy when we met him. Um, and then, you know, jump forward 10 years, and he's still like someone whose opinion we value. That's I, I love that you said that um, because I was going to ask you guys about the kind of uh, mental space people should be in in terms of, of finding a mentor. And, and as you were talking, I was also thinking about my mental relationships. And I never I didn't approach them, as you had said, I, I didn't approach them like I was finding a mentor. I was just trying to like when I met you guys, I, I was just looking to establish relationships and and meet people and and you kind of fall into it, right? It's, it, it kind of happens totally. naturally. You're, you, you don't reach out to someone and say, Hey, I'm looking for a mentor. Will you be my mentor? I haven't done that. Have you guys gotten email? Have you gotten? Yeah. People? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I actually like recently well, I've had like a couple conversations where people are like, I, I really want, like, I want you to manage or like, I want like, can you just be my mentor? And I like yeah. the ask in itself. First conversation in is like, Oh boy. You're a you're a handful, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. It just I get hit up, up a certain way, you know. I've never does. met you. What can you do for me? Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I'm so glad you pointed that out. Uh, I get hit up all the time by artists, and the very first message is is about like them, 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 and and me helping them, me like giving them a shout out, asking me to give them a shout out, or asking something of me before we've even established any sort of relationship. And I I Hi, that's not the way to go. Cause it's like, for me, I don't, I immediately kind of feel on the defense. A wall goes up immediately. As soon as I read a message like that, I almost want to hit the backspace button as quickly as possible and put it on unread. You made the a message skeptic, on unread. Skeptic out of me. I don't like the idea of somebody just coming. Oh, wait, was that a, did that I was just a miss a lyric? Lyric? What was it? You made a skeptic, made a skeptic out of me. Yeah. <laughs> from believer by disco fries and giants <laughs> from skeptic by rock and roll sausage <laughs> <laughs> so, so eh, okay so i would add to that so okay so you're not actually we're not saying to go out and just ask people to be your mentor the suggestion is from our collective experiences that the people that have ended up having influence and have been a mentor kind of fell into these relationships because there was there was kind of like a mutual something mutual that happens where you just become you, you build a friendship together that's, that's i think the main thing yeah and it doesn't have to be one person it, it doesn't have to be like i have to try the mentor like he's this guy with a staff 
that like follow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Maybe it's a collective of people that you just build relationships with. And some are like, we have guys that are awesome at radio and that guys that are awesome at uh, video promo stuff and, and ad marketing. And it's like, each one has their specialty and we kind of go to them for advice on different things. So I'm not going to go to the guy like we use, even though we do mixing and mastering ourselves for other artists, we use wired masters in the UK a lot for stuff. I love them. We're awesome. Yeah. And yeah. like, we're not going to go to them necessarily for advice about like how to run our label. We'd go to them for advice about how to mix and master records. So like, <laughs> right. you, you, like if you cultivate relationships with like a group of people, like it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be one person. You have a bit of a short list of, of people to go to. And I would also add to that, try to, try to establish relationships with people where you're also bringing value to them. Um, I would say, yeah. right. I, I would say Nick, between you and me, I, I do send you songs um, and ask you to listen and give advice. But at the same time, you're also looking for songs for your label and, and you're, you're, you're always looking for new stuff. So there's the potential of value there if it's a song that mm -hmm. you're interested in. Um, and then for me, it's great feedback to, to, to hear from you. Uh, Strobe, I don't know what value I brought to Strobe. We were just a really good friend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were just really good friends. I think, I think it really just came down to friendship. We just both really liked each other and got along and we just became friends and he naturally wanted to help me and I would support, I would go to his shows. So yeah, I guess I would add value by supporting his gigs and posting about them and, um, marketing stuff. I was pretty good at marketing and he, you know, the other thing yeah. you have to take into consideration is like, even if you're not at the level of, uh, your mentor, you're still bringing a fresh perspective, which sometimes can be super valuable in itself. So, um, we've done so many uh, collaborations over the years. And even if it's an artist that's just starting out, uh, there's still the potential for us to learn something we never would have learned because they're approaching it in a completely different way than we do. Yeah. So I, I think if a mentor sees potential in you and then is also seeing like how you approach everything, even just that there's a lot of value for them. That's a good point. Scott, we only have a minute left on this on this segment. I don't want to leave you out. Can you give us like a quick 30 seconds of I'm who so glad I get a chance to talk about <laughs> well, who, um, who is... I'll actually just say because I brought this up about being a camp counselor, um, there's two ways that I've worked, I guess, in a mentorship role. And one was when I was the music teacher at a summer camp, and the other is managing Ryan Sky. So, you know, those are two things that, you know, I found to pay it forward in that regard. But back in the day, you know, um, when I was taking guitar lessons, I looked up to Sean, who taught me everything from how to play very jazzy chords to rock out Green Day power chord stuff. And that inspired me to eventually make music my full-time gig. So it the, the mentee, has to have the right attitude and the mentor has to have the right amount of patience. Mm. Brian, can I squeeze in one more yeah. thought on this? So I, I mentioned this on a, that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you mentioned something earlier that I had talked about on a panel and it was basically about like, what value can you bring the mentor it, without expecting anything in return? Like what can you do for them versus what can they do for you? And I think like people have to consider any skill that they have outside of what they're trying. If they want to be a producer and their mentor is a producer, think about what else you can bring to the table. Like maybe you make lyric videos. Maybe you can yeah. do marketing really well on Facebook. Anything you can do, you should just offer it. Just fucking do it for free. Yeah. And then build a relationship that way. And ultimately, it'll lead to something. Greg, who's doing a lot of A&R for us, who just built out our websites and stuff, he literally came to my house every other day for six months for no money, paid the tolls himself from New York City to Jersey just to like learn shit and build a relationship. And now we, we go to him for all types of stuff, and he, he does a lot of stuff with the label. So, Oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad you shared that. This, this is good advice. And, and it, too. It's a great way to bring this episode to a close. 
some food for thought for you listeners on the power of a mentorship, something to think about in your lives. So glad. Disco Fries, thank you for joining me today. Thanks. Such Thanks a pleasure. Me. Yeah, I like yeah. you guys. I do. <laughs> Thanks, man. We <laughs> like you too and your jokes. Yay. Well, one day we'll talk again. I, I'd love to encourage listeners to check out the Disco Fries record, Believer. And also check them out on socials. You guys want to give your socials out? It's the Disco Fries everywhere. Not everywhere, but it's just... On the- all platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Disco <laughs> Fries. Yes. On I'm all platforms. Okay. You right now, Scott yeah. Waldman, get nuts. Whoop. Awesome. Whoop. Okay, you guys, that's the end of Life Rhythms Radio Show. We were so happy to have you on, and I hope everyone has a great day. Check out other episodes. Check out the Disco Fries online. And until next time. <laughs>